So why, like many, I've been using the iPhone 17 Pro for the past week, and already in that amount of time, I've been testing the camera out every single day in all sorts of scenarios. I even filmed a wedding with this. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. But in today's quicker video, I wanna talk about ProRes RAW and the issues that I'm having with it, the disappointments, and also this neat little hack that allows you to shoot in ProRes RAW without needing to keep an SSD plugged in. It has some pros and cons. Let's get into it. So I actually just came out with my first ever LUT pack. I worked so hard on them. If you shoot on iPhone with Apple Log, if you shoot on any sort of Blackmagic camera with Generation 5, these two LUTs will work perfectly on that, as well as I'm sure many other cameras out there. Every clip in this video was used using one of those two LUTs. So if you like the style and color, check it out in the link in the description below, and I'll be doing a couple iPhone filmmaking guide giveaways to people who buy my LUTs. So thanks so much for the support. Let's get back to the video. Here's the thing. A lot of of us were immediately kind of disappointed when we learned last week that you can only shoot ProRes RAW while recording to an SSD. It makes some of us a little apprehensive as to why we got a two terabyte model. And I was curious as to why Apple made this decision. Because after all, we have ProRes HQ, which is a very storage intensive codec. I decided to do some very basic tests here. And so what I did was just went in, I first shot in ProRes HQ, regular 4K, not open gate, because if you're not doing ProRes RAW, you can't do open gate at 30 frames per second because I forgot to change the default setting. I normally shoot 24, but whatever. I did the test the same on both clips here. So ProRes HQ comes out to 55.67 gigs. Again, a beefy file, and that is recording straight for 10 minutes. Now taking a look at this ProRes RAW HQ clip, also recorded for exactly 10 minutes, 30 frames per second. The only difference is this was open gate, so that is gonna add um, maybe a couple gigs worth because it's 4K either way, but just some extra vertical resolution there. This one is 87.24 gigs. So even if we factor in the extra resolution there, my guess is these are about 15 to 20 gigs apart. Now I wanna point out while shooting both of these clips, I kept feeling the back of the phone. Neither of them seemed to get any hotter than the other. Really didn't get warm at all, which is a huge plus over previous year's model of iPhone that anytime you did long recording sessions, it just easily got way overheated. The screen would dim. And here I didn't get any of that. The phone remained cool because the new vapor chamber in there, the aluminum build, it did a great job at spreading out that heat. And I never saw the screen dim and it is at 100% per usual. But that still leaves us with questions. I can shoot ProRes HQ internally without any issues. Why can't I shoot ProRes RAW? Well, it gets even more confusing and this introduces the little hack that I'm sure is the reason you clicked on this video. So if you wanna shoot ProRes RAW internally into the phone without needing to keep an SSD plugged in, you'll notice that I use that verbiage, keep an SSD plugged in. Here is how you do it. And unfortunately, my fellow Blackmagic camera peeps, this hack does not work inside of this app. It will only work inside of the Final Cut camera app. So if we go back here, obviously right now, if I go in and I select ProRes RAW, it's gonna tell me that it needs an SSD. No problem, let's grab our favorite Lexar Pro SSD. This is definitely the best one to pick up. I'll leave it linked in the description below. I love this thing still a year or two later. Anyways, now that we've got an SSD plugged in, I can now go in and choose ProRes RAW HQ, switches over to open gate, not a problem. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is then just close this, not quit it, so not do this whole thing and do that, but just close the app, pull out the SSD, and now if you go back to the Final Cut camera app, you'll see that open gate is Open Gate ProRes RAW HQ or ProRes RAW is still enabled and you'll see that I can record and I can start stop recording. And yeah, now technically I could run around and shoot a bunch of clips. Again, I can close it. I can go into other apps, use my phone, whatever. And after a few minutes coming back here, it still has the ProRes Q enabled. But if I do quit it or if you restart your phone, something like that, 
Now if I go back to it, you'll see that it flags this again and I'd have to plug in the SSD. So you can already see the uh, reason why this hack only is somewhat useful, because one, you still need an SSD set up in the beginning to begin with. Two, you never really know when an app is going to leave like the cache to where it like fully closes and resets. So I have no idea that if I, you know, do the whole thing, set up ProRes HQ, close the app, not quit it, but then is it still gonna be there hours later when I'm out and about and I wanna reopen the app? Or by that point, has it kind of cleared out of the phone's cache and now it's gonna do a fresh open where, man, now I need my SSD and I left it at home. So it's not a perfect solution, but it did give me insight into can the phone handle an internal recording. That second clip I was talking about earlier, that's 87 gigs, that was recorded internally to the phone. That means for 10 minutes, solid straight of recording ProRes RAW HQ, there were no drop frames, the phone's internals didn't overheat, or anything like that. And Apple probably has a couple concerns as to why they don't currently at least allow this to happen. One is there is a lot of variables. Again, maybe it's a totally different story while filming out and about in really hot environments. I mean, technically, if you're reading and writing a lot of sustained data to an SSD, it's very taxing on it, and it's definitely going to shorten the life of the media. And so maybe they're thinking they, you know, if people are recording that much for two, three years straight on their phone, in addition to all the other things that your phone does, for storing and reading and writing data, then it's gonna deteriorate a lot faster. But I don't know, the, the sustained read and write speeds also seem in the relative area of each other, again, from ProRes HQ to ProRes RAW HQ. And those are the highest codecs. I mean, normally I shoot ProRes LT, and so I'd probably just shoot ProRes RAW uh, non-HQ. And these are the moments where I tend to get a little frustrated at Apple because while I imagine a lot of third-party developers or Android phones, I feel like those other manufacturers or software developers would at least just pop up with like a warning of like, hey, if you shoot in this codec, it may shorten the life of your SSD. Similar to if you go on your Mac laptop or studio display and you turn it all the way up and you turn off like auto brightness or whatever, it will say like, leaving the display on at 100% will shorten the life of the display. But at the end of the day, it allows me to decide. Even if the pop-up was, hey, you may experience drop frames or in any environment, this may not be able to record indefinitely. But through this little hack, I've just proven that the phone should have no problems recording short B-roll clips or a couple minutes here and there of you and your friends and family going through life shooting in ProRes RAW. So I would love to hear from Apple directly. We never will, I'm sure. Like why it's only external SSD. These, these are the times where they push you into a corner and I just don't understand it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So while I'm grateful that we have ProRes RAW on an iPhone, it looks incredible. I have a lot of videos in the works coming, but I had to both vent in this video, but also show you the neat little hack. If you can find a way to make it work for you, then great. Hopefully either way you learned something in this video. If you wanna see more, definitely get subscribed. Oh, and I think this is the first video showing off that bad boy. So thanks to all of you. See you guys in the next one.